our first guest has a resume that's sort of really interesting and where it ends up is even more interesting. He's a civil rights attorney, uh, a former law student of Elizabeth Warren, former counsel of four U.S. senators, a TV writer for Law and Order, SVU, Saving Grace. He was uh, 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 he was uh, received an Emmy nomination. He was a big deal in this world of entertainment. And so you get to where he is now, is my point, and it is sort of surprising. And that is, he is commissioner of animal services for the city of Los Angeles. Welcome, Roger Wolfson. <laughs> How you doing, Mark? It's nice I'm to well, meet you. and I, I I chuckle when I read through all of this because uh, you had it so good, and you decided <laughs> to take on a really tough job. Well, just just so you know, I didn't have to give up the other things that I do in order to do it. The the uh, to be commissioner of animal services is an appointed position uh, that Eric Garcetti appointed me to it, and the uh, city council confirmed me. But it's not a full time job, um, although it takes a lot of time. Well, and it still the, the enables goals me that to, I'm still a TV writer and I still work in politics and other areas. Oh, okay. Well, very, very good. The goals that you've set, uh, I think, for uh, at least as I've seen them articulated as a commissioner of animal services for LA, uh, they are, they're lofty ones. Share with our audience what they are and, and how you intend to sort of develop a strategy to get there. Well, first and foremost, the Department of Animal Services of Los Angeles is is poised to be the largest city in the world that actually is no kill. So, you know, that is what we're doing. That's the most important thing that we're doing, and we really have our eyes on the prize. And, and how no are kill you means that, that we Roger? save. Well, we, a, a lot of it has to do with partnering with local rescues. A lot of it has to do with uh, training the public. A lot of it has to do with spay and neuter. It's a really huge approach to go from where we were five years ago when I became a commissioner, where we were only saving 59% of the animals that ended, entered our shelters, to 90%, which we're on the doorstep to now. I believe the current statistic is that we're at 89.5% save rate, and 90% means no kill. Uh, this has been a group effort. I can't take credit for it at all. There are um, hundreds of employees of Los Angeles Animal Shelters. We have an excellent general manager. We have a great board. Uh, everyone is really pulling the oars with their entire body weight. And it, and it feels as though oftentimes that body weight is insufficient to the weight on the other side because there are so Absolutely. many animals that are orphaned in so many different ways. Uh, the the homes that they live in, they're foreclosed upon, the uh, owners die. There's so many ways in which these animals end up uh, with a desperate need for, for shelter. And so you end up uh, having to uh, sweep up the mess that I think society's creating pretty regularly. Well, me and all the other people who work for it too, and thank you for your sensitivity to that and for that, that was very well expressed. Uh, so what, I, t tell me then, uh, the, you have an even more ambitious, I know it's more ambitious, but it's certainly <laughs> ambitious uh, goal within the shelter system. And it has to do with the, the food that the animals consume. Well, thank you very much for setting that up. Um, so to start with, what I've tried to do, and I, I've tried to do this every job I've had, and I encourage everybody to look at their own positions to see whether they can do it in their work as well. I try and think, well, how can I help use this position to save the world? And that's really the goal, right? I mean, we're trying, we, we, we have a world that isn't in the best of shape right now. It's heading in the wrong direction a lot of ways. But there are things we can all do in our lives to try and make it a little bit better. So what I looked at with the Department of Animal Services was why, you know, we're the Department of Animal Services, not just the Department of Companion Animals. So what, what can we do to actually save the lives of animals that are not necessarily in our shelters? So just to, pre just to preface this, if a cow came in off the street into one of our shelters, we would protect it. And we have lots of pigs in our shelters. We have chickens. We have turkeys. Uh, we ha um, and it didn't totally make sense to me then for us to be feeding those animals like cows and pigs and turkeys and chickens to dogs when dogs happen to be omnivores. Dogs thrive on plant-based diets, and I tried this myself just to make sure. I put my own dogs on a plant-based diet, and they did just great. And that's when I started looking into the research more, and I found that actually it really does make sense. It makes health sense, and it also makes sense from a position of, companion, of compassion.
Uh, that's now, a, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, continue, please. I was just gonna say as an aside though, that's a, this is a real sea change though for the way that animals have uh, survived in city shelters for years, right? It's always been that stuff out of the can and that's been other animals. Absolutely, and, and, and by the way, that goes with, our, with how we feed dogs at home. You know, um, most dogs uh, eat food that is not even meat-based, I and mean, this is kind of an important distinction. It's meal-based. So meat meal is the waste products that can't be fed to humans. And that, that constitutes the majority of dog food on the market. It's not healthy for the dogs. It's actually high in carcinogens. Uh, it's one of the reasons why right now when we look at dogs, we see that one in two are dying of cancer. And part of that is because the food we feed them. We can do better. Uh, Plant-based is not the only option that helps dogs. There are healthier foods on the market. And I'm very sensitive to the fact that people take their own diets and the diets of their animals incredibly seriously. You know, and there are lots of opinions on this, but I think that what really helps is if we stay close to the facts and we stay close to science. Um, what we have done in the city of Los Angeles right now is we are doing a feasibility study. So we're take, taking a look at all the research in the field and making sure that what we're doing is healthy for our dogs and healthy for our community. And one of the things, of course, is that our community isn't ready for necessarily big changes all at once. So we're looking at pilot programs. We're looking at ways of easing into this. But from a larger macro perspective, if we don't start looking at plant-based options, not just how we feed dogs, because by the way, a quarter of the meat, that, of, of, the, of the mass tonnage of meat that is killed in, a, in, in the States ends up going to pets. Uh, but if we don't look at ways to get those proteins and those calories from other sources, we're putting the entire planet at risk. Because the, 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 the raising and slaughtering 59 billion land animals a year is not healthy, certainly for the animals. It's not healthy for the environment. It's not healthy for us. I know just getting the pilot program started that you alluded to was an effort. You know, even these incremental yes. uh, movement that have uh, come along in this space have been a huge effort. But you're optimistic that once you get some momentum, once you get this pilot subject, uh, I'm sorry, the, pi the pilot program going, uh, that this will be a subject that doesn't become as radioactive and you'll get some momentum? Yes, I, I, I am confident. Well, it's the direction that we're headed in every arena. So for example, there's a wonderful proposal that was just put forth by Councilman, Council Member Paul Koretz of the LA City Council. Uh, which would provide, um, require all movie theaters and large scale entertainment venues. I'm just looking down at his press release to make sure I get it right. And other locations in the city to provide at least one vegan protein option. And the stated purpose of this is to combat climate change. Uh, and so this is, th this is the kind of proposal that Paul Koretz is putting forward. There are proposals all over the country to just move us down field a little bit in the direction of sustainable agriculture, of sustainable diets, and of healthy options for people to eat and for animals to eat. We're just, we're just headed in that direction. Uh, right. If you look at the vegan population, um, plant-based eaters in this country were only at 2% about two years ago, and now 6% of the public identifies themselves as being plant-based. We're headed in that direction. It's a... Uh it's a big effort, and I love the way that you identify also as you look at the shelters as a place that would shelter all of these animals that ending ending up in that can of food or that that bag of food. That always strikes me too when you see those videos of like the uh, it, there's some big accident and then the uh, slaughter truck, the truck that's going to the slaughterhouse, has fallen over and there are pigs running all over their place, uh, and and everyone is all concerned. Oh my God, I hope nothing happened to the pigs. I mean, yet. We, there's a disconnect there, right? Because we didn't seem so concerned with the pigs as they went through the horror show to get to that point, or the horror show as it continues once the truck arrives at the destination. That's really well put, Mark. You know, and I think that part of what's really going on here is that people's eyes are starting to open. You know, once eyes are open, it's hard to close them. And as we become more aware of some of the horrors that go on in the butcher shop and in factory farms, if you look at the fact that the entire meat and dairy industry is precipitated on the forceful impregnation of cows and pigs, 
that is usually done performed by undocumented workers who are toiling under the most inhumane conditions imaginable. You start looking at this, then you start thinking, okay, what are some other options? So, you know, I'm not trying to take away anybody's burger. Um, you know, I, I'm not trying to force anybody to do anything. I'm trying to provide options that let us take a better look and a healthier look at a more sustainable planet and a more humane process of our diet and our, of our agriculture. Uh, I applaud you. And the truth is that this is just, uh, it's, it's an indoctrination that we've done ever since we were kids. I mean, it's just habit that we eat the way we do. I mean, when you actually think about it, it's not, we haven't made these decisions consciously for any reason associated with health or the planet or whatever. It's simply an indoctrination that started and it's just become part of the culture and, 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 and so on. Uh, please visit us again and give us a, a good news on this, on a good report on this pilot program that you're beginning and on what's going on there. It, it's exciting. And uh, as I say, it's a big job, the animal services uh, uh, world in Los <laughs> Angeles. You, you picked a big city to cut your teeth. So uh, congratulations, <laughs> Roger, and uh, please come visit again. It's so kind of you, Mark, and I really look forward to coming back. Thank you. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com app.